Hello, it's great that you're joining us for worship today. Grace, mercy and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. O Lord, open our lips and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Give us the joy of your saving help and sustain us with your life-giving spirit. God shows his love for us in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Let us then show our love for him by confessing our sins in penitence and faith. Lord God, we have sinned against you. We have done evil in your sight. We are sorry and repent. Have mercy on us according to your love. Wash away our wrongdoing and cleanse us from our sin. Renew a right spirit within us and restore to us the joy of your salvation. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. May Almighty God, who sent his Son into the world to save sinners, bring you his pardon and peace, now and forever. Amen. Christ suffered for you, leaving you an example that you should follow in his steps. He committed no sin, no guile was found on his lips. When he was reviled, he did not revile in turn. When he suffered, he did not threaten, but he trusted himself to God, who judges justly. Christ himself bore our sins in his body on the tree that we might die to sin and live to righteousness. By his wounds you have been healed. For you were straying like sheep, 
but have now returned to the shepherd and guardian of your souls. The reading is taken from the second chapter of the Gospel according to St John, beginning at verse 13. Since the Passover of the Jews was near, Jesus went up to Jerusalem. He found in the temple area those who sold oxen, sheep and doves, as well as the money changers seated there. He made a whip out of cords and drove them all out of the temple area with the sheep and oxen and spilled the coins of the money changers and overturned their tables. And to those who sold doves, he said, take these out of here and stop making my father's house a marketplace. His disciples recalled, recalled the words of scripture, zeal for your house will consume me. At this, the Jews answered and said to him, what sign can you show us for doing this? Jesus answered and said to them, destroy this temple and in three days I will raise it up. The Jews said, this temple has been under construction for 46 years and you will raise it up in three days. But he was speaking about the temple of his body. Therefore, when he was raised from the dead, his disciples remembered that he had said this, and they came to believe the scripture and the word Jesus had spoken. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Jesus, Saviour of the world, come to us in your mercy. We look to you to save and help us. By your cross and your life laid down, you set your people free. We look to you to save and help us. When they were ready to perish, you saved your disciples. We look to you to come to our help. In the greatness of your mercy, loose us from our chains. Forgive the sins of all your people. Make yourself known as our saviour and mighty deliverer. Save and help us that we may praise you. Come now and dwell with us, Lord Christ Jesus. Hear our prayer and be with us always. And when you come in your glory, make us to be one with you and to share the life of your kingdom. We usually call this story the cleansing of the temple and it's very familiar to us. But what's actually going on here? Jews who came to the temple for festivals had to exchange their money in order to buy the animals they needed for sacrifice. You couldn't use ordinary profane coins that you use for everything else in the temple. You needed special temple currency. We're not told that the sellers of the animals and the money changers were cheating people, though doubtless some were, but others of them probably felt they were providing a good, useful service. Anyhow, Jesus doesn't condemn them for cheating. He says, don't make my father's house a marketplace. He's not actually condemning the buying and selling. He's saying that it shouldn't be happening in the temple, in God's house. I think this leads on to three things we can think about for ourselves today. First, we're not supposed to substitute church for temple here. Our church buildings don't serve the same purpose as the Jewish temple did. Remember how the curtain of the temple was torn from top to bottom when Jesus died. The barrier between God and man, which the temple's sacrificial system was intended to bridge, no longer exists because Jesus abolished the barrier. In Revelation, it says there will be no need of a temple because 
God's home is now with his people. He will live with them and they will be his own. In other words, wherever Christians are, God is present with them. But God's promise to live with us doesn't always mean we put him first in our lives, does it? We easily give things the wrong priorities. We put other things in the place which God should occupy. And if we put our wealth, our possessions at the top of our list of priorities, that means that we're pushing God down the scale. So, interpreting Jesus' words in our situation mean that our buying and selling, our activity to make money and secure pensions, etc., are perfectly okay and a right thing to do, but they mustn't take God's place. They only become wrong when they are what matters most to us, when they come first. Secondly, the temple sacrificial system was supposed to bring salvation and to give people the assurance that they were accepted by God. I wonder where we find our assurance. It's easy to try to deal with the uncertainty of our future by building up our reserves, our financial security. But perhaps Jesus' attitude to the whole temple and sacrificial system should make us think again. Do our ways of ensuring security, our savings, our insurance policies, our nest eggs, our stocks and shares, do they really give us security? Where is our final security found? What happens if we look at things from an eternal perspective, through God's eyes? Would we find that the best security is not in all these tangible things, but only through faith in Jesus? As Jesus says, Do not lay up for yourselves treasures on earth, where moth and rust decay, and where thieves break in and steal, but lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven, for where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. Thirdly, there's quite a lot of talk at the moment about the economic systems in our society and how a lot of what we take for, for granted is unjust. And people are wondering whether things could change or how to make more equal opportunities for everyone. If we want to apportion blame for how things are at the moment, some will lay it at the feet of a capitalist system, or banks, big businesses, or politicians. But being realistic, most of us have some part in it. The dependence on possessions to make us feel good. The building up of debt. The appetite for more and better, newer. These are all things which some of the time at least we're personally guilty of. We've put things in the place of God. We haven't heeded what the Bible says thinking it's outdated or irrelevant to us. But it has plenty to say about lending, about interest rates, about taking care of the poor. Just as there's plenty about putting God first, about our eternal security, about a fulfilled life without the need for material possessions. We may not be able to do too much about the global economic situation, although we would do well to have concern for those who are much worse off than we are. But we could take a long, hard look at our own practices and priorities and perhaps ask, if Jesus was to look at them with us, would he want to overturn things? 
as he overturned the tables of the money changers in the temple. What would Jesus say to us about our priorities, about where our security lies, about our willingness to follow him? We pray. From where we are to where you need us, from the security of what we know to the adventure of what you will reveal, to refashion the fabric of this world until it resembles the shape of your kingdom. Lord Jesus, lead us on. Amen. Let us declare our faith in God. We believe in God the Father, from whom every family in heaven and on earth is named. We believe in God the Son, who lives in our hearts through faith and fills us with his love. We believe in God the Holy Spirit, who strengthens us with power from on high. We believe in one God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Amen. God our Father, we know that your presence is everywhere. We thank you for your goodness and for your many blessings given to us. Your son declared that a new temple would be found in his resurrected body. Let us remember that each one of us is your living temple. Help us this day to clear away the clutter in the temple of our hearts, to make space for you and to enable us to work to your will. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God, who is with us at all times, help us to respond to the cry of those who long for love, fractured families, broken homes, neglected, unwanted, afraid. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God, who is with us at all times, help us to respond to the cry of those who call for justice. Persecuted and oppressed, exploited, ill-treated, broken. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God, who is with us at all times, help us to respond to the cry of those who worry for your wonderful world, for its beauty its richness, its diversity, a gift we must all protect and care for. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God, who is with us at all times, help us to respond to the cry of those who long for peace in battle zones and broken states, frightened, fearful, anxious. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God, who is with us at all times, help us to respond to the cry of those who search for healing, physical and spiritual, hurting, weakened, depressed, lonely. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God, who is with us at all times, help us to respond to the cry of those who mourn, to bring them comfort and healing in your love. May your perpetual light shine upon all those who have died in recent months. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God, our Father, we know that your presence is everywhere. You have chosen us and set us aside for service in the places where we live, work and move. You have called us to be lights in dark places, drawing others into your glorious light. You have called us to speak out, proclaiming your love, justice and mercy. You have called us to be neighbours to all people. For this privilege of service, we thank you, but also humbly ask for your power and strength 
without which we can do nothing. Enable us to always open our hearts to your spirit so that we might live and work to your praise and glory. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Christ crucified, draw you to himself, to find in him a sure ground for faith a firm support for hope and the assurance of sins forgiven and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen.